Welcome back everyone, Dino Joe here. Want to do something a little bit different. Just want to show some of the builds we have coming through on a weekly basis. Not every build gets a full video, not every build gets a short. But I'll show you what's on the bench, benches, what's on the dyno, maybe what's on the shelf, what's on the floor. So we'll just walk around the shop, show a little bit of it. Alright, let me know what you guys think. Alright, here's the bench I normally use. You can see, rigged up this stand. Phone mount for my camera rig. Got that idea from Brandon Cass, which I think uh, Bell Hopper uses at times too. Finished up this 395. That's fully ported, ready to go. Some dyno footage. Finished up this 61, turn 272. This 3120 here, this will get a full video, but waiting on a few parts and pieces. This was a split, full rebuild. This is getting ported. And we'll come over to the squish cutting area. FI-62. See the 3120s waiting? <laughs> but the smaller lathe here, we'll cut the bases on. Also, I have this 562. There's the short on it. This one, new cylinder, piston, new short block assembly. This 372, that one's next up. I have to get that one built. That'll probably get a full video. Stage all the saws for some baseline runs. These all get ported up and sent back to their owners. Here's the dyno screen. That's the run, last run on that 500i there. That's the screen I'm watching when I'm doing the pulls. Watch the engine RPM and then the dyno RPM. Since it has a 2 to 1 reduction, I just watch the engine RPM, try and time my pulls to hit that 10 second mark. Get some baseline runs on this MS400. This one will be getting a full video too. All right, over here is my messy, messy porting bench. Don't mind the clutter. Just a couple of drop lights tied up top. My motor can slide. Just so it doesn't bind up. If your motor's mounted too hard, it'll snap this cables a lot. So normally have a cylinder over here ready to port. Saw or two tore down. Some pieces on the lathes. Over there is the boring machine. Still need to get that dialed in, start boring some more cylinders. But I really like these mats. I believe they're uh, bar mats, anti spill mats. They're not too bad to grind on, then they catch all the shavings. So once you're done, same thing, your burrs don't roll off. So if you drop a burr when you're changing them, sorting things, you can pick them right out, then when you're ready to clean it, pick up the whole mat, hold it over a trash can, dump it out. Those are pretty handy, relatively cheap. Keep the vibrations down too. Alright, here's the packet bench. All the boxes that come in get shredded into strips. Works well to pack them. Saws all go out, new boxes. Handful of saws through here. Some people that send in just for dyno runs or when we pack materials or deflectors or the degree wheels. And that's all done right here on this bench. Sometimes we throw in some other projects. Just something I've been messing with. But some of these engines do use saw cylinders. So if there's enough people like it, we can show some of the bike stuff on here with the saw cylinder engines. So let me know what you guys think about adding some of this bike stuff in too. This is a bicycle engine, like I said, with 395 cylinder. I believe this is a big bore, so works out to about 108 cc's. Put a big carb on it, you can pipe these. So big carb pipe 395 ought to make some pretty good power. But that's what they look like.
right, here's the runs from the Holes Forma G666. That saw had some hours on it, well broken in. You can see it peaks a little bit higher up in the RPM. This is the ported 395. Ported 395, 9.12. And the G666 is just over 7.2, but it's showing 7 horse at 9100, where the 395 is peaking. 395 was built as a logging saw. It's going to the woods. Nothing crazy. Nice flat power band. Lots of usable torque. You can see the clone saw likes a little bit more RPM, just like the OEM 660s. So that makes sense, seeing the little bit higher RPM. But they're right there where the stock 660 is. Plenty of RPM in both of them. So this is just a quick little show. The ported 395 is about 30% higher than the 660 there. But it should make a dandy logging saw. There's a quick 61 to 272 build we've been working on. A little bit of widening in the lowers. Uppers were at 119. Set the exhaust at 100. Cut the band, cut the base, cut the extension. Now on this cylinder, we did have to turn down the diameter of this extension to fit into the 61 case. I don't know if that was just this cylinder or if that happens on all of them. But we'll get this put together. Get some dyno runs on it, see what kind of power it puts out. And this will just be a little added bonus in this video. All right, now to do this, the 61 uses larger carb bolts. So you either got to get the 272 carb bolts or drill and tap these oversized for the 5 millimeter bolts that the 61 uses. So I just want to put that in there too. Here's the results for the Counter Vibe 4000 and the 272 slash 61 build. 272 is up top, 5.93 horse, 8,900. Then the Counter Vibe 4000 is right at 5 horse at that same 8,900. And just for grins and giggles, I threw on an Echo 590. That's the Timberwolf. Now in the box, 3.77. That's at that 8,900. Peak power's back a little more. Closer to 8,000. It's just over 4.2. So it's about 4.3 horse for the 590. So 590. Counter Vibe, 272. Counter Vibe had a muffler mod. Base gasket delete. And a little bit of port cleanup. I've never had a stock one on. The gentleman asked for a dyno run. So he sent it in. I ran down the dyno. This is the result. I figure I'd show the run. I know there's a few people that like those counter vibes. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about the older stuff. That 61, 272. 61 came in non-running, so I didn't get a baseline on it. And I haven't had any stock 272s on either. But 6 horse is pretty good for a firewood slash work saw. So I just wanted to share these with you.